You are now listening to a message from a Cal Christian Center. Get set to be at the fire. God has blessed you. It's all by the hearing of it. So, we receive the Spirit by hearing. So, he called Christianity a profession, a confession. So, he said, even Jesus came, spoken out. The word became. So, we become what we have heard. So, he said, be careful how you hear. Because that's how you will be. Praise the Lord. So, in receiving, praise the Lord, we have to, because it's spiritual, we have to be spiritually toned. And thank God for what we've been hearing. I followed yesterday. Powerful stuff. And some of these things, you need capacity to receive them. God, these are the things you will become. These teachings are your prophecies. You cannot become what has not been spoken. Praise the Lord Jesus. And heard. However, hearing is very important because it's the doorway of reception. You remember the parable of the talent. Come on. One was given five. The other was given two. The one was given what? One. That totaled eight, right? Eight, right? But the master of the man did not come with eight talents. Think about it. So he went with more. Reason being that they couldn't take more than eight. The one that was given five did not have capacity for more. Not because the man had said, I am going to give you only five. No, he could only take five. The man got there and found out that he could only take five. The one that was given two, now you talk about, look about, if he gave this one five, come on, then it's not selfish to have given this one two. At least give him three. No, he couldn't even give the guy three because he did not have capacity for three. He gave them severally according to their ability. Amen to God. According to their ability. So what's your ability? It determines what you can get. And, and this thing is very essential. You know, sometimes we look for laying on of hands and what you desire, you have no capacity to take. So, the laying on of hands can bring so much more, but you will still take what you can take. So, hands can be laid on several persons. The same thing spoken over them. They will manifest different. Because they actually didn't take the same thing. And it's not on God. On God will help you build capacity. But on God is not a receptacle. <laughs> it is capacity that determines reception. Let's pray again in the Holy Ghost. Lord, help my reception. Widen my reception. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know this is a spiritual meeting. I will tell you when we sit down in a few minutes why I look forward to element. And I was saying it in the hotel this morning before we come. I come with expectations too. Look at this. There are major, there are many words for receive in the New Testament text, especially in the Greek. Praise the Lord. But majorly three are very important. Number one, there is receive that is the command. It simply means to accept. It is the giver prompted receiving. That is the giver is actually coming to put in your hands. So the receiving is actually implicated by the giving. So what you do is just to accept. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Then another word for receive is lambano okay lambano is receivers prompted taking because it's to seize hallelujah to god so this is not that the giver is coming to give to you you live where you are 
Praise the Lord Jesus. You reach out for it and you seize it. So it is incubant on the receiver. Now pay attention to this. Those are very important words. But for what I was about to say now, a third word used for receive is Koryo. Koryo is the room to receive. If you have no room, you cannot lambano, you cannot decomai. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you have no room for it. Hallelujah. He said, if the case of a man and woman be like this, it is, it is better to just stay alone. He said, not everyone can receive this choreo. Not everyone has the room to take this. So in this place today, with all the ministry gifts that are coming, it's up to you what you can take. A ministry gift is already a ministry gift. I know my gift. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I'm very generous with it. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. But you see, but generosity does not equate reception. Come on. I can come in the coma to give to you. If you have no room, you can't take it. How many of us have eaten? Okay? And there's no room for more. And that's when I now brought the chicken peri peri. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And then you are looking at it. But what's only you do? Let's say, Aro. At the Joloku. Or read that do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you have no room for more. Even if you want to lambano. Okay, you have lambano it now. There's no room for it. So, Korea is very important. Lift your hands. 60 seconds. Just let go in the spirit. Talk in other tongues. Pata, pata, pata. Chana mayando. Elabayada, shalayan. Elemontush kanana. Ereta yataha. Lord, remind us. Remind us. Stir up our pure mind. So we can take heed to the ministry that we have received and to fulfill it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for element. Thank you for the light that is in this conference. Thank you for your help so we can see under this light. For light is that which makes manifest. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Alright, let's have a say. Welcome to LMM again. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and appreciate Reverend Ola Leia and his lovely wife? Thank you. Powerful servants of God. I have um, continually communicated with Reverend Femi regarding the mega year. And it is evident. Constantly reaching him, I said, "Wow, I see what what is happening at Oikia. Wow, glory be to God. The graph, the graph is going like this. Praise God. Powerful things. Great work of ministry. And I believe that this year's element 
will bring you into capacity for more. That there is always more. Praise the Lord. And with more, you get better. Get better. The more the responsibility that we take, the more the anointing that will flow. Amen. Responsibility has a way of improving the anointing. For where there was no verse, no more verse with the oil stayed. Because the oil is for a purpose. So the more you wrap yourself around purpose, the more the power of God will comfort from you with great urgency. Hallelujah. The reason a lot of people see the power of God stifled around them in the work of ministry, most of the times is because they are not using it for what it is for. There is power abuse. You can abuse the anointing. If what is abuse, using something for what it is was not meant for. That's abuse. And one of the place or one of the places you will find abuse. Okay? It's actually in the work of ministry. Amen to God. It's actually in the work of ministry. Because the power of God is seen for something that it was not given for. Hallelujah. If I be a man of God. Most of the time when that statement is made, what is, what is coming behind is not good. <laughs> it's not a good thing. What is coming behind that thing is not the reason that person is a man of God. Hallelujah. And when you have exercised the power of God for what it is not for, for a very long time, when you come before what it is meant for, it becomes strange to you. Amen. Very important. And that's one of the reasons I look forward to Elimel. I was sitting there in the hotel room today. And I was like, I've been to a ministers conference. In fact, I teach in a few Bible schools. You know. And most of the time, when we hear ministers' conference, or we hear school of ministry, praise the Lord Jesus, or things that have, if at all our teachings will be for ministry, anyway. However, when I, when I, when I hear LMM, it does something to me. Wait. I'm, I found out that it's because of the ladies inside that title. And I tell you, and it is it is only in LMM that you see ladies emphasized, okay, uh, with respect to a minister's conference. So you go to a minister's conference, also a minister's conference. The people you actually expect they are men anyway, because there is there is the consciousness when you say minister's conference. There is the men, you know, thing that comes up. But when you come to LMM, you can you can look around. You you see a lot of ladies, and it it does it does something to me. You may not know it, but it affects the consciousness of people. And so you attract more ladies, okay, who are called, and you make them bold with their calling. I'm telling you, this is what I'm telling you. You can take register. If as I'm looking around now, I'm even seeing it. Hallelujah. So in, in Oikea, so that's why you find women in the spirit and by the spirit. Because there is a consciousness of ladies and men in ministry. Praise God. Not men in ministry, ladies in the kitchen. Or oh, ministry of women affairs. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. So it's very important because the things of the spirit or the things of Christ or the things of ministry are slippery. It is so easy to slip away. You remember in Hebrews chapter 2, hallelujah, you know, I'm going to have three sessions, I've been told. So in the three sessions, I'm, I'm going to be having Imago day 1, Imago day 2, Imago day 3. 
and I'll be talking about, I'll be talking about the, my, my emphasis and focus will be Imago the one, the first man. Imago the two, the last Adam. Imago the three, the second man. Praise the Lord. And we'll be looking at ministry. Glory be to God. We'll be looking at ministry. So Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Pay attention to this. Hebrews 2, 1. Will I have it here? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Therefore, we ought to what? Give more earnest heed to the things that we have what? Heard. Again, you remember I was talking about hearing. Because hearing is how ministry is communicated and is how ministry is received. Because the ministry of the New Testament is that of the Spirit. It is not in things, it is in words. So the more you are open to God's words, the more capacity you have for ministry. In fact, the more usable you are going to be. Hallelujah. Years ago, I came from a crusade from, you know, I, I, I had these experience, the visions of Jesus. And then I came from, I think from a crusade, you know, in those states, praise the Lord Jesus. Years back, this should be, uh, this should be like late 90s, like 98, 90, 98. Yes, 98, 99. Within that. So I was holding crusades around. So I came from a crusade in, a, a, a community in Ondo State. And then I got home. Then we were staying at Ibadan or Emiji in Ibadan. So when I got home, I had this room, praise the Lord Jesus, that I had to myself. So I just returned from the crusade. So I said, okay, let me just use the restroom before I enter the room and just rest. So as I walked past the room, I saw the room was all lit up. Praise the Lord Jesus. So lit up. That you could see the beams of the light trying to escape through the door, you know, like that. Very shiny and glorious stuff. So as I was going, I was like, ah, what could be the source of this light? Praise the Lord Jesus. I said, okay, let me let me go uh, ease myself first. I said, what will it take? Let me just peep and see what's going on. When I opened the door, right before me, because I had this bench, I had the, the bed like that, and I had this bench just opposite the door. And then as I opened the door, on the bench was Jesus sitting. He was actually the source of the light. Then all of a sudden, with that, I said, my Lord. And then he looked up, and then he, with his hand this way, he just tapped the side of the bench, as if telling me, come and have a seat. So, by this time, I had forgotten that I was going to the toilet, praise the Lord. Because it's no longer, you, you, you get what I mean? Praise the Lord. You know, this is the glory of God. So, everything natural is now suspended. Praise the Lord Jesus. Look at this. And then I ran there. Glory be to God. Threw my back to one side. And then as I ran and I sat down. So, he just went on as though he was, you know, writing something. Then when I sat down, I found that he was not paying attention. So, out of excitement, you know, he has his hand that way, and, like, and I just pushed my head under his arms that way, and I, I had my head on his lap. So, from there, I looked up into his eyes. Hallelujah. I, I'm having that same experience right now. They were like wells of love. As you just keep seeing it, it's as if he's going and going, you know, you just keep looking at it. It's going and going, <laughs> and it's never gone. So as I was looking at it, I was so overwhelmed. So I put my two hands together this way and then I just rubbed them together, you know, like a plea. I said, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. And then he looked at me and smiled. And then he said, but I'm already using you. Then in that moment, praise the Lord Jesus. Of course, he appeared to me first, 1993, three days consecutively. And this was like 1998. And between 93 and 1998, 
you know, from Islam, I had seen a lot of things. Praise the Lord Jesus. Preached in several places. Had people got, gotten born again, seen several dead bodies raised, you know, within that period. But I, I felt there was more. So, I started thinking inside of me like, ah. I said, this is all. Praise the Lord Jesus. If this is all, then why am I? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. And then he seemed to hear my thoughts. It's as if while I was thinking, I was actually speaking out loud. Then he looked at me again and smiled. And then he said, the measure of you that you give to me, that measure I will use, I will never intrude. I just quoted him. Hallelujah. Then I found out that we don't need to pray, Lord, use me. We need to be usable. So from there I knew that he cannot use you more than you are usable. So it does not determine how much he's going to use us. We determine it. Oh, I wish you were following these things that I'm saying. We determine it. And that determination is seen in how we hear. Is seen in how we hear. How did Jesus raise his disciples? Teaching. How did they become raised? Hearing. Words. Hallelujah. Words. Everything that you are going to get or become is in the things that you are hearing. Hallelujah to God. So some hearing will put you down. Some hearing will tear you apart. Some hearing will build you up. So if you, if, if you understand your vision, if Oikia, if you understand your vision and know exactly what God would have you do, then you already know what you should be hearing. Hallelujah to God. You know what you should be hearing. He said, therefore, we ought to give the more, more. Somebody say more. more. So to be more, you hear more. To do more, you hear more. Because the ministry is in words. So how much you can accomplish is also how much words you can give. It's how much you can teach. How much you can communicate. You receive from hearing. You give from speaking. So if faith comes by hearing, it goes by speaking. I don't know if you are following this. I'm saying Everything that we have become in the spirit by the spirit was spoken and was heard. And we see here. Say, so therefore we ought to give them all earnest heed. Earnest, sincere, heed. Our, look at this. Our, our heed to the word of God. Our passion for the word of God must be sincere. One thing is to desire. Another is for that desire to be sincere. Hallelujah. When I come to Lagos many times, I feel something in Lagos. Praise the Lord Jesus. Among young, young ministers. And it is competition. So people with great vision are not sincere. They already got the anointing. They already got the power. But a lot of people are looking around on what somebody else is doing. And because they look around what somebody else is doing, praise the Lord Jesus, somehow there is a feeling that is not sincere. Look at this. You cannot do what somebody else is doing. Because what? If you do what somebody else is doing, then you don't know your calling. Or that person does not know his calling. One of you does not know his calling. We can't be doing the same thing. Pay attention. And our works will not measure the same way. In fact, God will never compare our works. Talk to me. You, you don't know what I'm called to do unless you hear me say it. Come on. So you cannot say a man is, a man is successful. You didn't set the goal. So how do you measure his success? You can do a great work, but not the right work. 
So it's a day that measure themselves by themselves and compare to themselves by themselves are not wise. He said it is stupidity. It's not wisdom. Some people will go to nations because it's in their calling. Some people won't go. Even they give them visa, they will not go. Nations will, will not allow them to come because it's not in their calling. Have you not seen people go to nation and return from nation? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> so I'm a national pastor. Hey, you're already in a nation. <laughs> so my ministry is global. Hey, where you are is on the globe. <laughs> you see, we need to understand this thing. I just told you one was giving five. One was giving what? Two. One was giving one. It's not partiality. Did you notice that? That example did not give room where they were talking to one another. The one that was giving five came back with what? He, he could not have come back with six. The one that was giving two, if that guy came back or had the result of three, he would have been dead first. Maybe somebody who is one that will now bring it for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because he does not have the capacity for that extra one. Do you understand these things that I'm telling you? The one that was given one, pay attention to this. Only one was given a for him. You see, why the master was angry? <laughs> was that the guy went and buried it. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God forevermore. So there was no room for discussion. You know, one of the issues with us today is mentorship. Mentorship today <laughs> is the reason many people are doing well. It's also the reason many people are doing badly. Imagine those, these three eh, have mentors. Then the mentor, maybe they had one mentor. The mentor will not be comparing them. You now say, you can do more. He cannot do more, sir. <laughs> How will he do more? He can't. So can't you see this person? Past five. You can do more. You can you can do more. Is the reason some people are not in the mug. These things are slippery. Many times you will not know that you have slipped away. Activity is not the same as spirituality. Result does not mean it is correct. Huh? Speak to the rock. Moses struck the rock. Water still came out. Come on. The people still drank. They still looked at Solomon. I mean, what is his name? Moses has a powerful but that was where he ended. Are you listening to these things that I am telling you? Therefore, we ought to give the more and next what if the more we have this passion, the more we learn about ministry, the more we want to be used of God, the more we must be sincere. Sincerity, straightness, integrity is lacking today. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that will open room for corruption. Look at this. Therefore, we ought to give more energy to the fish that we have heard. It is in hearing. Lest at any time we should let sleep. The word them italicized. It's not the things that sleep. We sleep. The Greek rendering said, lest at any time we sleep away. Is that not what happened? God's vision is God's vision. It will be consistent. Noah, go to Nineveh. He didn't go, right? He slipped away. Chapter 2, it was still Nineveh. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying. So, the vision of God is constant. But you see, because we are still in this body, come on, 
there is room for inconsistency. He said, but if you pay attention to what? Hearing. Hallelujah to God. Amen to God. You will achieve consistency with the vision. Consistency with the vision. You will be as consistent as your timetable with God. It's in hearing. Amen to God. And what is your role here? Attention. Somebody say attention. Okay. Are you aware that all that God has given us in Christ are free? So come on, talk to me. The only thing God said we should pay is attention. So greatness and effectiveness in the fulfillment of God's ministry is at the price of attention. He said, pay attention. That's the only price. Attention. Hallelujah to God. Attention. Lest at any time we should slip away. So as we hear this today, Oikia, for instance, what is the vision? As a minister here, do you still have your vision in view? What God said to you, have you not slipped away? Praise the Lord Jesus. Attention. Glory be to God forevermore. That's why I look forward to LMM. We are ladies and men in ministry are reminded, praise the Lord Jesus, of attention. He said, take heed to the ministry that you have received of the Lord. And to what? And to fulfill it. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Especially with each day, that day is approaching. Are you listening to this? What I'm saying? So, when we come together like this, if we must give the earnest heed to the things that we hear, then we preachers must also give the earnest heed to the things that we what? That we teach. Because it's what we teach that we hear. See, the impression we give people about God is the pressure that they're going to have. Hallelujah to God. And that's what the Imago Day is about. Imago, image. Day is from deity. So it means the representation of deity. You become the go-to with respect to deity. So it is therefore the impression that you give. Hallelujah. That they have, have you, if you have, if you have, if you have experience with what they call oracle. Isn't that what oracle says? <laughs> you understand? Know and it's okay, that's what oracle says. But everybody is not hearing the oracle. <laughs> there is one man here who is hearing the oracle. <laughs> See, what does the oracle say? Oracle says, we should sacrifice that man. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is hearing the oracle. Therefore, it is the what? Impression that the representative of Oracle gives that the people have. Very key. Reverend was saying some things powerful yesterday. Okay? About Ima Godi and the temple of God. Do you know what that means? Oh, we will get there. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, when we gather like this, we must give the earnest heed to the things that are taught. That's where it is. It is not in the miracles that are done. The Lord Jesus Christ stood before me a few years ago. And then he said to me, he said, there were miracles before I came. You know I'm very miraculous, right? Uh -huh. Because sometimes when I start talking about miracles, some people say, maybe this is one of those people. That, that they don't have supernatural. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the discipline I am learning eh, is, to, is, to be, is, to be, is to be doing small, small <laughs> with the miraculous. The easiest aspect of my ministry is miracle. I see. Miracle is the easiest. God has blessed me so. 
So constantly, he reminds me of what matters. Praise the Lord Jesus. Reminds me of what matters. So he said, there were miracles before I came. Say that will be that it was not because of miracles that came. Come on now. Elijah raised the dead now. Elisha raised the dead. Hallelujah to God. So Jesus raising the dead was not new. Come on. He didn't even regard it as new. Why? The raising the dead was a side thing. It was focused to the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So that will tell us that the miraculous is not the ministry. Because if the miraculous was the ministry, then Elijah had this ministry. Then what's the difference? Why coming to die? Because we know that ministry is in Christ. So if ministry is in Christ, then whatever was done outside of Christ would not have been a ministry in Christ. Oh, I wish you were following the things that I'm saying. So, it's not the miracles. Thank God for miracles. We need miracles. Miracles have their places. Hallelujah to God. And I believe in miracles. If, I, if I'm to ask you now that, what was Jesus' greatest miracles, or greatest miracle of his miracles? Praise the Lord. In your own mind, what will it be, sir? Eh? In your own mind. I'm talking about salvation. You know, the miracles. What will it be? Raise, raising Lazarus from the dead. You do not even say raise the dead because you know he raised the dead, but that Lazarus death. Hallelujah to God. Well, I believe in miracles. You are looking at someone who has seen 22 dead bodies raised. And I've seen the dead body raised who died before Christmas. Praise the Lord Jesus. A church member was told on the 27th. That's how many days after Christmas. After Christmas. He died before Christmas. Was told 27. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? You can do the man. Look at this. And they had done native embalmy. Put the man in all this native mortuary. Embalmed. Hallelujah to God. The man came back to life. Glory be to God forever. I've seen miracles. Praise the Lord. But constantly the Lord in revelations and in visions will tell me, take heed to the ministry. Hallelujah. There was a time Jesus told me, he said, what you are doing now is a shrine. It's not a church. Hallelujah to God. At the time you worry, if somebody died, general hospital, central hospital, they had my number. <laughs> you worry. When I'm holding meetings, churches will close their weekly activities and bring all their members. They called us emergency center. <laughs> Where they come to dump all the problems. I went down into the church. You see people on stretcher. So he put, you would think it was hospital. See people on drips. And I would be teaching. They would not listen. So they would be sleeping and snoring while I'm teaching. I could teach. Amen to God. But they were not listening. Hallelujah to God. And then when I start ministering to the sick, you see them, they'll start calling. He don't start to, he don't start to, he don't start to. <laughs> Before you know it, the whole place is jam packed. We pull outside with vendors selling food. <laughs> you 
You'll be hearing them. Say, ah, this man, they talk. Oh. I also talk about here today. <laughs> I just say, they say, he get power away. He own power now to the talk. <laughs> Look at this. I left the world. I could teach the world. But I felt that that it was not. So let me let me let me give them what they want. If you don't take heed, the environment will determine how you will now do ministry. See, this is what they need. Can't you see they are suffering? This is what they need. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. You must not do ministry because of need. Not your need, not the need of the people. You do what you are told to do. Because you see, sometimes this, many times, not even so, this miraculous thing is the reason many of us have slipped away. A lot of us pursue knowledge today because knowledge is also another intent. You know what I'm saying now? But you see, you don't need all the knowledge that is out there. The Lord told me, he said, the knowledge you don't need is the one that will puff you up. See, you don't need all the knowledge out there. You don't need to attend all conferences. Every new apostle in town does not have a message for you. I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. Does not have a message for you. See, if you understand what I'm telling you today, you will have integrity in your ministry. You will have sincerity in your ministry. You will have effectiveness in your ministry. You will see power in ministry. Because power has been given you for ministry. The day you discover harmony, wholeness with the spirit of your vision, that is the day you will discover the power of God from rest. You will discover kinetic energy from rest. Glory be to God forever. Hallelujah. So the Lord said to me, what you are doing now is a shrine. Amen. Say, this is not the reason I sent you to worry. Then the Lord said to me, why do people go to shrine? Think about it. Have you seen somebody go to shrine with note <laughs> and pen? People go to shrine because they are pursuing something or something is pursuing them. And the, 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 and the native doctor, come on, is a perpetual problem hunter. Solving people's problems. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Then the Lord told me, get back to the ministry. Hallelujah. Said the ministry is not the miracles. Hallelujah. And you know how I got into this thing? Praise the Lord. I was in NYC. Went to serve in Delta State. And we had, I was queen for the, for the first Alawi. And then, for, to cut a long story short, some ladies came and pushed me from, pushed me into the sun. You know? <laughs> because, <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus. Because one came and said, excuse me, I'm just in front of you. I say, there's no problem. <laughs> and then our friends started coming. Sorry, I'm just behind her. Oh, okay. And then they were coming. They were coming. They were coming. Until they pushed me <laughs> under the sun. I became angry. Hallelujah to God. Then, <laughs> and I remember the Bible said the sun must not go down. And I, and I looked at her, I saw the sun. So, so I said, no, no, the man of God must not, must not strive, must not fight. And right there as I looked up, everything disappeared. Everything disappeared. The camp, the, the core members, everything vanished. And it was all a mass of cloud. And there was Jesus. And then he said to me, when you are done with NYC, go to worry and start a work. That's how I got to worry. I got to worry from NYC. Hallelujah to God. So I got there. So I would come do prayer work. I did prayer work for, for almost a year. 
Then I asked, Lord, how do I break into this place? And then the Lord said to me, he said, there is a common denominator among all men. Say it is needs. Somebody say needs. He said, the rich has needs. The poor has needs. The educated. The illiterate. He said, so if you will channel your ministry to meet needs, they will come. You know, ministry is to meet needs. Primarily spiritual needs. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, I started meeting needs. <laughs> Until I left the primary needs and became a native doctor. <laughs> with, the, with the power of God. Glory to God. And then I stopped. After that uh, revelation of the Lord, I stopped. I stopped ministry miracles. Sir, for two years, we could not fill the front room. Two years. <laughs> In fact, some men of God that were always coming around for impartation. They left. <laughs> Wait. Some of them went to town and started spreading rumors. That I have done something and the anointing has left me. <laughs> no, you know when you are very anointed, you know, in, in the eye. When, if you breathe, miracles happen. If you drink water, <laughs> miracles happen. I say, <laughs> hallelujah to God. He said, this person is sick. He said, huh? Then you say, oh yeah, put the person there. And then miracle happen. Everything about you is miracle. Now, there's no, and you are not even doing as if you are done miracle before. <laughs> they left. I became very lonely. I, I wanted to die. <laughs> and, and then the Lord said to me, you are doing ministry. <laughs> Say, now you know your members. <laughs> so those people are not your members. They are miracle seekers. The moment I stopped, they went to somebody else. Who oh, is doing miracle? Are you listening to this thing that I'm saying? How you know your real members is when you are doing. If what God says you should do, that you are doing, is what attracted them. Hmm. So, we must pay attention. So, the Lord said, now you are doing what? Ministry. Now you know your member. And I just stay there. If I will, heal, if I will minister healing to the sick, I minister to them secretly. And the only time I was doing Miracles, not much, because I was very careful. But now, I now find out that the way I switch was too much. <laughs> you know, so sometimes when I teach in school of ministry, I tell you, I don't switch like that too, because <laughs> I almost died, sir. I could still be teaching, just prioritize, but I just turned, do, do, do you turn? That kind of thing can even kill miracle anointing, if not for the grace of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because what tears the gifts of healing is sickness. The gift of healing is excited in the presence of the sick. Because that's what it's for. I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. That's what it's for. So when there was no more vessel, <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus. So at a point, when I'm teaching, maybe I'm talking about laying of hands, and I tried to demonstrate. So the miraculous now became like practical classes. But I didn't call it like it, it was during teaching. Are you listening to this? And I'm saying, so Lord said, now you are doing what ministry. So what then is the ministry? Look at God Corinthians as we hurry up. It's God Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a what new creature. All things have what passed away. And all things have become new. Salvation, right? Simply put. Then in verse, uh, in verse 18, Second Corinthians 5, 18, and all things are of what? God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ is his death, burial, and ultimately his resurrection. By Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. So the ministry is not that of miracle. 
The ministry is not one of signs and wonders. Are you what I'm saying? Signs and wonders will show in the ministry. But that's not the ministry. That's not the message. The ministry is one of what? Reconciliation. Hallelujah. Reconciliation. Praise the Lord. Now notice that he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So he gave to who? He gave to new creations. So salvation is the call to ministry. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What that means is that the old is gone. The new has come. Then in verse 19, he said, this new man and everything about him is from God. Hallelujah to God. So nothing of the man, nothing of the devil, everything is of God. Now pay attention to this. He said, and everything is of God for ministry. So you have a supernatural life for a supernatural work. We are born again, praise the Lord Jesus, for ministry. Amen to God. So salvation is a calling. So everyone that is saved is given the ministry of reconciliation. Are you listening to these things that I'm telling you? Say, I am given the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry. Thank you, Jesus. That's the ministry. Now pay attention to this. Then in verse 19, to which God was in Christ, reconciling the whole world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and at what? Committed to us the word or message of reconciliation. So there is the ministry of reconciliation. That ministry of reconciliation had its own message. The message of reconciliation. So, people are not reconciled to God by all messages. People are also not reconciled to God by all services. You know, ministry, diakonia, means what? Service. So, but there is a service and a message. Hallelujah. That when we are in that service and we are communicating that message, we will see reconciliation. And that's the objective. That's why Christ came. That's why he died. So our question must be, why did he come? Raising the dead. Elijah raised the dead. That cannot be the reason he came. So raising the dead all over town today does not make you a powerful man of God. Can I shock you? Can I shock you? You will never give account for not raising the dead. Because a lot of us right now, your goal is to raise the dead. <laughs> if I raise the dead. <laughs> hallelujah to God. I say hallelujah to God. And that's why you may never raise the dead. Forget about raising the dead. You will raise the dead. If you look at it too much, you will, you will think it is too much. Come on. My first dead was raised when I have not even read that the dead could be raised. I had only read Quran. Jesus has appeared to me a few weeks behind. I you know what I'm saying? Somebody died. He said, go put your hands on that boy and I will bring it back to life. And I said, no. Think about it. Because I've never seen it done. It's not done in the Quran. I've not started reading the Bible yet. I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. That a dead could be raised. Talk to me. I said, are you listening? So, a lot of us want to open blind eyes. Or stop deaf ears. Cause the lame to walk. What is popular now among young people is creating miracles. So we are going to grow legs. We are going to grow teeth. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Amen. We are going to grow ears. Say you are, you are, you, you don't like your height. Come. We'll grow your height. 
Your height is too, is too much. Come. We will reduce your height. And then young people will now gather to learn creative miracles. As if we now come together, they will now put somebody's leg together like this. We now put somebody's leg together. Stop it. That's the reason the work of God on earth is not done. That's not the work of God. That's not why you got the Holy Ghost. That's not, that's not the reason for salvation. People could do that before salvation. So there have to be more. You have to do what Elijah could not do. Then you are in ministry. Talk to me. So he said there is a ministry of reconciliation. That is a specific ministry and it has his message. Oh, I wish you were following. It has what? It's message. And that message is the message of reconciliation. You can't preach all messages and then you say, if you want to give your life to Christ, come outside. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of us give our life to Jesus Christ many times. How you knew that you are now born again was a message. Did you notice Peter in the house of Cornelius? Peter in the house of Cornelius was a DJ. First, he started with the law. Go read it. Very long message. He was just talking and talking. Talk about Abraham. Talk about all of them. They now got to works. Cornelius has, they were listening. They believe everything he said, no. But they were not saved. Even though all that Peter had said were true. And they believed it. They were not saved. Until verse 42. Look at it from verse 1. No? <laughs> verse 42. 43. Peter began to say, Whom they crucified. Whom God raised from the dead. And God that sent us that it is through him. And faith in him. Men shall receive remission of sin. So why he was still saying these things. Where to? You need to know these things. Because Peter said so many things. What is this demonstrative adjective? Plural, proxima. That is near. So this thing, it was when he started saying these things. Because that's the message that said. So they had believed all that he has been saying. But when he started saying these things, they believed it too. Just as like they believed the rest. But it is faith in this one that's it. They were still hearing. In fact, do you know that Peter did not finish the message? Peter would have still continued. All of a sudden, you trap What? What is this? No, you just said what says. You are talking. Come on. They believed. They conceived. It's in a message, sir. And if we do not have that message every time, praise God forevermore, we will have people among us who are not reconciled to God. But if that is our message, if our message is Jesus' is death, burial, and resurrection, every time, you will need a call. Come on. You need... Look at this. You have to get to that place that if somebody listens to you, if somebody does not want to be saved, he won't listen to you. It's in a message. We don't need to prove us of people that we know a kind of message. And that's what a lot of young people do now too. They now start studying so to let them know that ah, we too, we know that message. Which message? You don't need all these messages. They will not help you fulfill your assignment. There is one message. Hallelujah. So our theology must be Christology. We don't need to know who, who can marry. Are you listening to this? I'm saying? We don't need to know the key by which the Q 
kid David became King David. We don't need to know it. We don't need it. Look at this. There were things David said. Go check the epistles. They didn't quote everything David said. Some people did not even say anything that is useful today. Do you know your man of fire? Amen to God. Did not say anything. You don't understand? Your man of fire. Your man of raising the dead. Fire from heaven. But be a man of God. Did not say anything. That is useful in Christ. For us to quote and teach today. Likewise, his mentee. <laughs> Glory be to God. Our theology must be Christology. There are many things about God. Look at this. We wanted to know God, right? We wanted to know God. God now came. I said, see me. And now he came as Christ. That will tell you. If he did not come as any other thing but Christ, this is how I want to be known. Are you listening to this that I'm saying? And our Christology must be soteriology. Because the reason he is Christ is salvation. That's why you will find out that the epistle had no chapter for the birth of Jesus. Think about it. No chapter for Mary. How did the gospel start? He said, Jesus, I delivered to you that which I have received of the Lord. Jesus appeared to who? Apostle Paul. And said the gospel is his death. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand what I'm saying. His burial and resurrection. Think about it. Nothing about his birth. The birth of Jesus is also part of Christ, right? Talk to me. But it is the soteriology that is the center of Christ. That's how you want to, you will call his name Jesus. Why? He will save the people from their sin. Well, I wish you were following this and I'm telling you. So our Christology must be soteriology. The entirety of the epistle explaining Christ was salvation. The entirety of Jesus coming was going after we are salvation. In fact, the reason he's called Jesus was not because Jesus is special. There were many Jesus. The name is a common name. But it was what the name represents. Yeshua, Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. So it means that the essence of his coming was what? Salvation. Yeah, God is God, but God saves as Christ. So you find that faith in God does not save. It is faith in Christ that saves. Talk to me. Faith in God will give you healing. Faith in God will give you deliverance. Faith in God will raise the dead, but it will never save. Talk to me. Are you listening to this what I'm saying? So he said, ye have faith in God. He said, let not your heart be what? Neither let it be what? Ye believe in who? He's not saying believe in God. He said, you believe in God. They already believe in God. He said, believe also in me. They believe in God, their heart will what? When Jesus cried, let not your heart be troubled. He's not talking about palpitation. The real trouble of the heart eh, is lack of salvation. When you get to the lake of fire, <laughs> you will know what heart trouble is. Amen to God. You know no nation believes in God like Israel. Talk to me. No nation believes in God like Israel. Yet he said, my heart desire is that Israel might be saved. They believe in God. Yeah, Jesus came to save them. How many of us know that Cornelius believed in God? 
Ah, ah. He served God with all of his arms. He prayed to God always. He gave much arm to the people. Yet the angel said, come Peter. He will tell you what you are supposed to do. <laughs> what was he supposed to do? Believe in Christ. To be saved. How many of us know that the Ethiopian eunuch believed in God? Uh -uh. He left his country to Jerusalem to worship who? And he was returning with joy. That would tell you that that was not his first time. But he wasn't saved. Talk to me. So faith in God does not save. Faith in Christ saves. Come on. So God as a savior is whom we call Christ. Talk to me. Look at this. How many of us know that God bless or blesses sinners? Come on now. Do you know that the gospel is a proof that God answers sinners? Look at this. Because the gospel is not in the gospels. So nobody could be saved in the gospel. But people were healed, delivered, blessed were. So if nobody was saved in the gospels, then they were sinners. Yes, God became a man and was helping sinners. I hope you know he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was talking about sinners. So when some people come up today and say, the richest man in the world does not know God and is prospering. That means you don't need God to prosper. You know well. Look at this. How do you know the, God didn't help the richest man in the world? Think about it. Peter was a sinner. He toyed all night and caught nothing. That was business. Oh. Not that he didn't, he didn't catch the fish of men. Are you, are you what I'm saying? He didn't catch anything. All night. All your motivational wisdom. He used all it. No work. We, division of labor. Partnership. Toyed. Hard work. You know, have you hard work pains? Hard work work. Hard work did not work. Oh. All night. Right timing. See, when you have the right timing. It's going to yield the right timing. <laughs> they chose all night. If you are a fisherman, you should know what that means. All night. Praise the Lord Jesus. Professionalism. Say, get more education. Get more qualification. Take courses. Are you listening to this? These were fishermen. They were not students of fishery. Hear this. They inherited that profession. Yet, professional men came together, right timing, hard work. Huh? They caught nothing. Talk to me. Where hard work did not work, the world worked. Launch! Hallelujah! And he had a great word. Catch. Pay attention. It was so big. He had never seen it in his life. He became afraid. He knelt down and said, depart from me, I am a... So God blessed the sinner. In business. I hope you know that where he turned water to wine, there were sinners. Huh? He is good like that. The father of our spirit is still the God of all flesh. Are you listening to this? What I'm saying? Jesus went to a social gathering not to pray for the couple. To now spoil everything. He now gave them wine of everything. <laughs> See, let the party go on because wine make it merry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. 
Say they have no water. Ah, they must, they must have one. <laughs> what is that? Water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw out now. Take it to them. The wine was so good, sir. That it was better than the good wine. <laughs> Look at this. The man said, ah! Everyone at the beginning of the party will bring for the good wine. Women are drunk because they are already drunk. They will not bring the bad wine. Say, ah! You are a wicked man. You have, you have reserved the good wine until now. The man did not even know. The bad wine was finished. The good wine was finished. Jesus gave them a better wine. Pay attention to this. And he said, this beginning of miracle, this Jesus is king of Galilee, manifesting his glory. Even turning water to wine manifested his glory. Think about it. So how do you think the richest man in this world does not have God's help? He sent his reign on the just and on the unjust. Hallelujah. He gave it to all men liberally. When you are a liberal giver, you don't care who is receiving. In fact, a liberal giver means it removes all conditions. Come on. How are you liberal? All men. That's why it's all men. If you are liberal, it must be all men. Because you have taken away qualifications. Or break that not means it does not charge with error. That's why it's liberal. Does not care who he's getting. God helps sinners. God answers sinners. God heals sinners. God will raise sinners dead. God will raise sinners dead business. The gospel showed us. And you know, there are things angels did that we cannot attribute them to God. Praise the Lord. Reverend Femi was teaching yesterday. He made mention of Zechariah when he said you will become dumb. Praise the Lord Jesus. We know God didn't send him that one, right? That's because he has power. Now, Peter tells you this. So we can't attribute that to God, right? Elijah did things that we cannot attribute them to God. So men said things, angels said things that we know they were on their own. We cannot attribute them to God. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever Jesus said and did cannot be separated from God. Whatever he has said, he has said it as God. Whatever he did, he did as God. So God blesses sinners. However, the blessing of salvation is in faith in Christ. Talk to me. So because any sinner can get help from God, but the help of salvation will have to be faith in Christ and that they cannot get without the message of Christ. That is the reason for ministry. That is the reason for the spirit within. That's the reason for the anointing. So he said, he has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. And committed to us the message. So we have the ministry. We have the message. Do you see the word committed in the message? That's even very strong. Let me explain something to you. God has a service in the ministry of reconciliation, right? What is God's role in the ministry of reconciliation? What is his own ministry? Okay, in this vision of redemption. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So God's role is his love for the world. Amen to God. Taking responsibility of their sin because they, we sinned against him. Come on. And we deserve what? The penalty of our sin. Hallelujah. But he did not overlook our sin. He did not push our sin aside. He did not take our sin lightly. He took responsibility. Look at this. Justice was fully met with our sins. But in God himself, in his son Jesus Christ. Are you following this? What I'm saying? That was God's role. Love the word, give Jesus, raise him from where? From the dead. Because God, it is men that will kill him. Come on. I say it is men that will kill him. That's why the only place salvation could have been halted was Jesus dying. That was not in the hand of God. That was in the hand of men. God had to wait on men, trust men to kill him. 
So had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So if they had known, Peter shot, Jesus would have still be here. Because he can't kill himself. And God won't kill him. God killing Jesus will still be suicide. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So the people, the people will just say, we will not kill you. <laughs> you will remain here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you are following this thing that I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Pay attention as I bring this thing to an end. Look at this. So, God's role was to love the world, give Jesus, raise him from the dead. Because if Jesus was killed, nobody can stop resurrection. Are you listening to this? So, his birth was God's, was in God's hand. His resurrection was in God's hand, but his death was in man's hand. Pay attention to this. That was God's rule. What was Jesus' role? His death, his resurrection. A willing vessel. Pay attention to this. Now, God has served in the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus has served his role in the ministry of reconciliation. Pay attention to this now. The ministry of reconciliation outcome now is in the hand of the church. Let us attend to men. Whatever we do in ministry will be, will be the work of God that, that, that would have been done in ministry. Is that not a huge responsibility? That it is what we accomplish now that will be this redemption. That is, we determine its limits now. So, success in ministry, the, 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 the end impact of redemption, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, the outcome of it is now in our hand. Do you know why God succeeded in his role? He minded salvation. Do you know why Jesus succeeded in his role? He minded salvation. Do you know why we are dragging in our role? We are minding too many things. Too many things. You want to raise the dead. You want to, you want to kill the living. You, <laughs> you just want to do something so that you can come in the news. Whereas, saving a sinner is also raising the dead. Are you listening to this? Committed. Somebody say committed. Hear this. So, the gospel can only work now. With believers. You don't get it. A non-believer may have the information of the gospel. He can share that information with another unbeliever. But that unbeliever will not be saved. So the gospel is not just in its information. Oh, we did BK now. You did not do CRK. Huh? Were you not told the death of Jesus? Were you not told the Burial of Jesus. Were you not told the resurrection of Jesus? You even passed. That means you knew it. But you were not saved. So, the gospel is beyond the information. There is the transformation side of the gospel. That transformation side is in the spirit. So, the unbeliever can have the information of the gospel. And share it with another unbeliever that will not be preaching. Because what commanded transformation is that the man preaching it has the spirit. Ah, so there is the rituals of the gospel, which is just the information that Jesus died and was buried and resurrected. However, the transformation side of the gospel is in the spiritual of the man who is sharing it. So it means that it will take a man with the spirit within to impart the spirit within on another man. You cannot give what you don't have. The, look, another person can only be saved from another person that he saved. So the gospel only works on the lips of the one that it has already worked in. So he said, unto us it has been committed. Strong words. What does that mean? That will tell you that, look at this, even angels, look at this, angels have ministry in, the, in reconciliation. Ministry means service, right? But 
they do not have a service with the message. So you see, there is the ministry given. There is the message committed. So angels can serve in having somebody to be saved. But he cannot serve in giving the person the message. It will not work. Why? Angels don't have the spirit. Talk to me. Why? Because he did not die and was raised for them. Talk to me. Come on now. Since you know that children were partakers of flesh and blood, he shared in their what? Humanity. It will be two parts of the same. Hebrews 2, 14. That by death, he might destroy him that hold the power of death, that is the devil. And to free all those who throughout their lifetime were subject to death. Look at the next verse. 16. Verily, he took not the nature of what? Angels. Because you see, in the world, there were two fallen creatures. There is a fallen angel. There is a fallen man. So, he saved him when he now came into the world because his mind was on man. What is man that you are mindful of? To be mindful means, the, the, the Greek rendering is to be preoccupied by him. So when he said, in the beginning was the word, the logos, that was God being preoccupied. Because in that logos, the ending part was man. Oh, I wish you were following what I'm saying. Logos. So he's now saying that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So when God was in his own existence, from the time you can begin to count God's existence by the revelation of himself, he was not alone. He was with his mind full of man. That was what led to creating what? Man. Because man preoccupied him. Pay attention to this. So, that's the Logos, right? Mindful of him. The son of man that thou visited him. The Greek visited him. It's not, it's meant to host him. To host. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's not just like, oh, it's not just like he entered into the world. Praise the Lord Jesus. Or came to visit man. No. He, he took on man. He entered into humanity. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He hosted humanity because he became man. So he entered into humanity. So the mindful of him is Logos. The son of man that thou visited him is incarnation. He became a man. Hebrews. Now look at this. Thou art crown him with what? Oh, praise God forevermore. Okay? He's now speaking. But oh, thou hast made him a little lower than the angel. Hallelujah to God. In the fulfillment of the prophecy, praise the Lord Jesus, is now, is now the crucifixion. Because you have made him a little lower than the angel in that he died. That was Jesus Christ. We see, we say, now we do not see man crown. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angel, in what? In the sufferings of death. That he might taste death for every man. Talk to me. Do you see that? Because angels don't die. So that was made a little lower than the angel in the sufferings of death. So a little lower than the angel, he talks about his crucifixion, his death. Thou art crowned him with glory and honor. Is now his resurrection. So we see a messianic context. From its inception, prophecy, to its fulfillment in the resurrection. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, so that was what preoccupied what? Man. So, God was able to serve fruitfully because he was mindful of man. Jesus came and fulfilled his mindful of man. But today, our minds are divided on many things. Whereas, man is the end impact. Are you listening to this? Man, that, look at this. You have been ordained for man. You have the spirit because of man. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You have a calling towards men. And only in your hand can this thing work. Hallelujah. So, how do angels serve? Angel can appear to an unbeliever. Amen to God. Lead him to what? A believer. Then that unbeliever cannot be saved with the hand of his being. Because to him, the message has been committed. Hallelujah to God. 
Example, Acts 10, Cornelius. Angels can appear to a believer and lead the believer to what? An unbeliever. And then the believer will now preach to the unbeliever unto salvation. An example, Ethiopia Enoch, I quoted it the other time. This thing is even so strong, even with Jesus. Jesus cannot appear to a man and preach the gospel to the man to save the man. You think about it now, if he could. Does he need us? We are the one wasting his time. Are you aware that he appeared to 500 people at the same time? Could have just appeared everywhere. And everybody will go born again. And this thing will be done fast. Think about it. I said, think about it. But no. Because unto us he has committed. The responsibility that is on you is so big that this thinking about something else is a thinking about something less. Hallelujah. As in, God is in you for the salvation of men. The hand of God is upon you for the salvation of men. Hands are laid on you for the salvation of men. If you are not saving men, you are not proving your calling. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you be a man of God, men should be saved through the preaching of the gospel. Apostle Paul was successful in his ministry, right? How? He was mindful of one thing. Hallelujah to God. So, when I come back, we will see the relationship of this and Adam. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let us make what? Man. In our image. Praise the Lord Jesus. Where we have Selem, the Hebrew word, representation unto manifestation. But however, that representation unto manifestation in itself was not the ideal. It was the beginning. Pointed to a prophecy of Christ. Then, the Latin word, which is the imago dei. Imago means image. Dei is from deity. That is the image of God. Also, a prophecy looking at Jesus. He was telling you where God started. Inception. Are you listening to this? What I'm saying? Now pay attention to this. So, in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, and so it is written, the first man, the imago dei. The first man was made what? A living soul. The word was genomai means he became. That was what Frederick was saying. He became what? A living soul. So if he became, then it wasn't it to start with. He became. He now said, and the last Adam, okay, was made. That means he too became. The same word was genomai. Became what? A life given spirit. Now pay attention to the next. He said, I'll be it. That was not first, which was spiritual. But that which was natural. Afterwards, that which was what? Spiritual. Do you see that now? That means, even though God was going to spiritual, because the man God wants unto himself, being a spirit, would have to be spiritual. Because the temple God was looking for, praise the Lord Jesus, was actually a spiritual temple. But he began first from the natural. So the destiny of the natural is the supernatural. So that the destiny of Adam is Christ. Are you see what I'm saying? So he bred, look at this, he bred into his nurseries. A man became what? A living soul. That's what I say. How did he become a living soul? Think about it. The first man was made. So how was he made? How did he become? There was a process. Okay? Look at this. A living soul means that he was dead, right? I said he was dead. He became a living. So he was dead, right? So the body that was on the floor was dead. Why is it dead without the spirit? As a body without the, without the spirit is what? So that, that is what, the prophecy of Adam, he made the living soul, look at this, pointing to Christ began with death. 
Now, making him, look at this, a living soul, pay attention to this, is now a prophecy of resurrection. So, he bred into his nursery. The bread was a prophecy of the spirit. Do you know what I'm saying now? So that the bread into his nursery is now a prophecy of the receiving of the spirit. Him coming back, becoming a living soul is a prophecy of how that will be raised in him. So he began with the natural and he was going to the supernatural. So he said, the second man, do you see that? Is the Lord from heaven. So he went from the first man, the last Adam. Not second Adam. Because if you saw second, you are giving room for third. So he called him the last, meaning that we are not expecting another one. So he ended that. So that a second man can rise. You see that? So there are actually two men. So you now have the mankind, the Christ kind. So you have the man in Adam, the man in Christ. As we have born the image of the earthy. Even so shall we bear the image of the word heavenly. So look at this, finally. It goes from the natural to what? Supernatural. From the flesh to what? Spirit. From the earthy to what? The heavenly. From Adam to Christ. So our destiny is actually spirituality. Come on now. So as so, you will now see that the consistency of the Imago Dei began at the inception as a prophecy or what we call type and word shadow. But it's going to the fulfillment in Christ and ultimately the man that is in Christ and towards one assignment. What was Adam's assignment? Replenish the earth. So in the, in Christ, the man in Christ, what's our assignment? Go ye now into all the world. Replenish the earth, but now not with Adam kind, but with Christ kind. So that even replenishing the earth was a prophecy. Looking at Christ. So evidently the Imago Dei came up for salvation of men. Glory be to, to God forevermore. So, we are not representing the Imago Dei. Come on. Until men are what? I say it. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that we are all the more taking heed to the ministry that we have received of the Lord and to fulfill it. Let's stand to our feet, lift our hand and talk in other tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's talk in other tongues. Let's talk in other tongues. Thank you, Jesus. I am the Imago Dei. I am a representation and manifestation of God, of the deity. The work of God is done in me. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That, that was a man talking. Peter said, look on us. Look on us. Look on us. Paul said, follow me. Wow. These are men who have entered into this revelation. Apostle James said, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Ghost.
Alabadaya teke. Nombre nous gofika. Endoli kisu. Pele vada hayat. Seli, seli. Elatosh kisafa. Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash oikia God has blessed you.